So far, we've seen several different algebraic operations that we can do on vectors. We've seen that we can add two vectors, and that geometrically that represents positioning them in a sort of tip-to-tail format. We've seen that we can take the scalar multiple of a vector, and geometrically multiplying by a scalar is going to stretch a vector while maintaining its direction. We've also seen something called the dot product, which was one way that we could take two vectors as inputs, and then we got out of it, not a vector, we got out of it a number. And we've seen how the dot product was related to the angle between the vectors. In this video, we're going to look at a fourth kind of algebraic operation that we can do on vectors referred to as the cross product. And in this scenario, we're going to be taking two input vectors and we're going to get out of it, not a scalar like we had in the case of the dot product, we're going to get as an output another vector. Now, the algebraic definition of the cross product is this, that A cross B is equal to this big, long, messy thing. And the main thing I want you to take away at, at this particular stage is that I've got the, the triangle brackets and a couple different commas there to indicate that this thing that I have it is a vector. It's got three different components. And if my vectors A and B both have three different components, it has to be three, it can't be two, it can't be four, it has to be three, then the cross product is going to be defined as this. Now that we've defined this cross product, we have several things that we want to discuss. First, we want to be able to figure out, how can I actually compute this cross product? This big, long, messy expression, is there an easy way to be able to memorize and to be able to apply it? And it turns out there will be. Second of all, I might be interested, what kind of properties does this cross product have? And there's going to be a bunch of interesting properties. And, and thirdly, we've seen that when we come up with an algebraic definition, like the dot product or vector addition, we also want to know whether that algebraic definition corresponds to some geometric thing that I might be interested in. Indeed, you might ask, why do I care about this cross product? I've written down this weird thing. Why is that something that we should be interested in? One way that we can compute a cross product is using this determinant notation that I've written down. And it's okay if you haven't seen such a thing before. I'm going to walk you through it. The first point is these, this boldface IJK notation. When I write it out by hand, I'm going to just use an I hat because I can't do boldface by hand. But, but this is just a, a shorthand notation for the unit vector in the x direction. j hat is a shorthand for the unit vector in the y direction. And k hat is shorthand for the unit vector going up the z axis. Now, the way this works is that it's going to be the sum of three different things. I'm going to read it left to right across the top row. First of all, I have this i hat. And when I look at the i hat, I sort of cancel out the, the row and the column that I'm in, and I focus in down here on this submatrix, this 2 by 2 grid. And what I'm going to get is that I want to write this out as this is, I'm doing the i hat component, so I'm going to go and put the i hat out the front. I'm going to write it as the main diagonal, so that's a2, b3, and then I subtract off the sort of off diagonal. So I subtract off an A3, B2. So in other words, what I effectively have done is I, I've copied and pasted the I hat on my top left corner, and then I've, I've written out this cross. Notice that we're doing a cross product. So I've written out this cross of the A2, B3 minus the A3, B2, where I look at just the four terms that, that don't include the I hat in any way. Next up, I'm going to look at the J hat. And for this one, it's kind of weird. You know how I just had an I hat? I'm going to subtract off the J hat. That's the rule. You sort of have to just remember it. And here, if I get rid of the row and the column that I'm looking at, then, then what I want to be doing here is I want to be taking the A1, B3, and I'm going to subtract off the A3, B1. So in other words, again, I'm looking at this little 2 by 2 something, and I'm taking the, the cross of it, the, the, the main diagonal, subtract the off diagonal. Third one I'm going to do, now I'm going to be looking at the k hat. So again, I ignore that row, I ignore that column, 
and that gives me, it's a little bit nicer here when I'm doing the edge ones, this gives me this little 2x2 two two sub matrix to look at, and I'm going to take the main diagonal, so this is me adding k hat, take the main diagonal a1, b2, and I subtract off the off diagonal, so I subtract off the a2, b1. And that's how I'm going to be able to compute it. And you you might notice that that if I look at what I've got, this this a2, b3 minus a3, b2, that's the first component, the one in the green. Go, go back to the previous one. Indeed, that's what I have right down here, the a2, b3 minus the a3, b2. So, so it is consistent with this notation. Okay, so, so that's a little bit long and cumbersome. Uh, let's try to figure out for a specific example how it's going to go down. And this is going to take us a few tries before we really have it in our heads. So I'm going to say that a cross b, what's my sort of method? I write the i hat, the j hat, and the k hat along the top. I write the 1, 2, 2 along the first row, so that's the, that's the a vector along the first row. And then I write the b vector, minus 3, 0, 4. Okay, so how did my method work? First of all, I wrote down the plus i hat, the minus j hat, and the plus k hat. And then I'm going to fill in each of these. And each of the three things are going to be a main diagonal minus an off diagonal. So if I'm looking at the i, then I'm going to be looking over here in this region. I want to take the main diagonal minus the off diagonal of that. So that's going to give me 2 times 4 is 8 minus 2 times 0 is 0. I may as well put it in just for completeness. Next up, I'm looking at the minus j hat one. So here, that's going to be my main diagonal. That's going to be my off diagonal. So what am I going to get? I'm going to get 1 times 4 is 4 minus a negative 3 times 2. So I'm going to write 4 plus 6. And then finally, it's going to be a k hat. So I'm going to be looking at this 2 by 2 sub matrix. I take the main diagonal minus the off diagonal. And that's going to give me 1 times 0 is 0 minus minus 3 times 2, so plus 6. And then finally, if, if you want to, you, you can leave it in the ijk notation, but, but I often like to sort of put it back together into just a single vector here. And, and I remember that, that effectively what this does is that the i hat is just tells what the first component is, the j hat the second, and the k hat the third. So this tells me if I've got an 8 i hat, it tells me I've got an 8 in the first component. If I've got a minus 10 j hat, it tells me I've got a minus 10 down here. And in the k hat, I've got a 6, so I'm going to write it out as a 6. So, a bit of a cumbersome procedure, but after you do it a few times, you'll be able to remember this particular pattern. Now, one property of the cross product is that the cross product is a vector that is orthogonal to both of the two original vectors. Indeed, this is one of the main reasons why I care about the cross product, because I often will care about vectors that are orthogonal to something that I already have, and the cross product gives me a way to find an orthogonal vector. I think I'm going to go low tech to visualize this, which is to imagine that I've got this pencil represents my vector A, and then I've got a vector B here, and I have my two vectors, and, and they sort of sit there, and they've got some angle they're coming out. And if I think about it, what are the possible vectors that are orthogonal to both of these vectors? The only possibility is either this one here that, that goes straight up, I'll try to twist it around a few times, that goes straight up, or this one down here that's going to be going straight down. The length of the vector is, is sort of undetermined. It, it could be as long as I want, but it either has to be one of those two cases, pointing straight up with some length or pointing straight down with some length. And that's how I'm going to be able to get a vector orthogonal to another pair. So, so effectively what the cross product does is it spits out this vector that's orthogonal to the ones that I have, and then it can be multiplied by some length, possibly even a negative number. So let's check that indeed this property is true for our specific example. This is the a and b from before. And if I go back, what do we have? The cross product is 8 minus 10, 6. So let me write that down before I forget. a cross b is going to be 8 minus 10, 6. Okay, so I want to show that this cross product is orthogonal to my a and b. And showing something is orthogonal, we've seen before, is equivalent to saying that the dot product is equal to zero. And if the dot product is zero, my vectors are going to be orthogonal. So I want to show a cross b 
I'll put it in brackets, dotted with a is just equal to zero. So let's see whether this is the case. I'm going to write out a cross b. So this is, uh, again, my 8 minus 10, 6. I'm going to dot it with my a vector, which is 1, 2, 2. And then I'm going to remember that the way the dot product works is it looks at the, the, the product of the first two components. So that's 8 times 1. And then it looks at the product of the second two components, which is going to be minus 10 times 2. And then it looks at the product of the third components, which is going to be 6 times 2. So in other words, this is 8 minus 20 plus 12. And indeed, this is equal to 0. I can also check the other side. So indeed, the dot product of the cross product with the vector b is additionally equal to 0. And my theorem appears to be true in this particular case.